Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as Sean said, my name is Paul O'Brien. I'm Director of Research and Technology here in the UK, and, and we're, we're delighted to be hosting you here at BT Centre. This is a great, a great venue, an ideal venue, actually, for the gathering of startups and academia and industry. <clears throat> what I'll talk about is I'll give you <clears throat> a brief history of BT's uh, commitment and, uh, obs uh, I was going to say obsession there, but our commitment to purposeful innovation uh, by running through our heritage, where, where, where we come from. And then towards the back end, I'll just give you a glimpse in these few minutes of our, our current setup and how we operate. And I'll talk about some of the, the labs we've currently got around, around the world. This is very appropriate because essentially BT is, uh, we, we, we say, is, uh, we date our, our heritage back to 1847. We were the first telco in the world uh, and it was called the Electric Telegraph Company. And that electric telegraph company was founded on, on a patent, <clears throat> a combination of excellent science with outstanding engineering towards a particular purpose, which was to create the world's first uh, commercial and practical electric uh, telegraph device. And these are the two gentlemen that actually founded uh, um, and produced that patent and founded the company. That's uh, Professor uh, there's William Fothergill Cook and uh, Professor uh, Wheatstone. Now, Wheatstone is the entrepreneur. Professor Fothergill Cook was the academic. And <clears throat> what they produced was this, which was a patent for the uh, Electric Telegraph in 1837. There's a picture of it, which is at the Imperial Museum, if you care to go there a few, about an hour away from here. Uh, and it was that, that invention, that combination of science engineering towards a particular purpose, which founded... Uh, the Electric Telegraph Company in 1846. And ever since then, throughout the history of our company, from the Electric Telegraph Company through to Post Office Telecommunications, through to present day as BT, we've had a long history of innovation. And that's why we're committed and excited to be hosting you here today. I'll point out a few of those, those innovations. One in particular, which many of you will be interested in, which is Colossus in, 18, in 1943. Tommy Flowers was uh, a post office tele, uh, telecommunications researcher at Dollis Hill, not far from here. And he created, he designed and developed Colossus, the, the first programmable computer in order to crack the Lorenz code for Alan Turing. And we're very proud of that heritage and it shows that our heritage isn't just in networks and, uh, and telecommunications devices, but also in, in IT and computing. And that innovation goes all the way through from 1846 through to present day. Another uh, key milestone, I think, is in 1984, uh, which is where BT developed the world's first commercial single-mode optical fibre link of 140 megabits per, megabits per second, which was significant back then. This was uh, a world's first, and although we didn't invent fibre optic uh, technology, what we did do is we explored and developed the engineering behind it. How could we deploy this at scale across the UK and beyond? <clears throat> and it's that technology, that, that commercial deployment of single mode optical fiber, which forms the very backbone of our modern day internet. And it's a, a key milestone which we're very proud of. And we built upon that in recent years, and this is taking us to, to the present day. So in 2014, we pushed the capabilities of that single mode optical fiber, that commercial, uh, deployment to three terabits per second. So there's a good example of how we continue that commitment, that investment in our research and innovation to drive that capacity up to that speed, which is equivalent to about 100 high-def movies being downloaded on a single strand of fibre in a second. Obviously, we didn't stop there. And the reason we're doing this, as I said, purposeful innovation, the purpose behind this is the fact that the, the demand in, of capacity in our core network is growing by 40% a year. So just over every two years, we're having to double the capacity in our core network. And in order to do that in a cost-effective way, we're continuing, continuing to push the capacity and the capabilities of that, that fibre link. And the, the latest science that we've been doing has driven it up to 5.6 terabits per second. Uh, and as you can see, that's trying to accommodate that explosive demand, explosive growth in content that's coming over our networks. 
This isn't done alone. So although we've got our labs in the UK, this is done in partnership with, with startups, with academics, and with industry. And in this case, this was done with Huawei. Yeah? So we work very closely with our vendor community in realizing this, 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 this achievement. Now, that's all network technology, but our research program is much, much broader than that. And although I won't go into every one, each one in detail, just to give you a glimpse of the kind of research that we're doing at BT, uh, we're very much looking at how we can drive speeds in the access network. And we've pioneered a new technology called G.Fast with our vendors and with the standards community, which drives speeds in our copper access network up to about 300 megabits per second. And that's something we're very aggressively rolling out and or, or, or uh, trialing at the moment. Uh, our ambition is to achieve 10 million homes by 2020. And there's an example where we're driving the capacity in that core network. Beyond that, we're looking at uh, future TV services and how our ultra-fast access can be consumed within an ultra-fast home. So we're very excited about the, the, the new high-def TVs, 360 VR, and a whole range of capabilities that we can deliver into the home, into our customers' environments to improve their, their, their services. Tron mentioned earlier analytics. Big data analytics is very much at the core of BT. BT's got a vast amount of data, as have other large organizations. Our challenge is how we can best harvest it, manage it, and exploit and extract insights into that data to deliver uh, better decision making across our organization. Security for us is important. BT has to secure not only its own infrastructure and networks, but also the infrastructure and networks of our customers. Uh, and we've got some, uh, uh, we're pursuing a range of security activities in that space, particularly in the cyber space. Uh, the latest product of which we've been recently deployed with our Cyber Assure, which is looking at how we can secure very large multinational corporate networks. We're heavily engaged with the Internet of Things. <clears throat> We're uh, involved in uh, smart cities around the UK, in places like Milton Keynes and Manchester, where we're looking at how we can better leverage and support uh, an ecosystem of applications and services which could deliver new insights and ways by which we can run our cities much more efficiently. And there's a range of other activities. These are just a glimpse of some of those that we're addressing. 5G, of course, in the mobile space is another active area of, of, of research for us. In the crowd today, there's a number of people from these different areas, and I'm sure they'll be delighted to engage with you and talk with you as we go through the day. <coughs> Most of our research, uh, or the hub of our research, is based in a, in a site about an hour from here called Dashiell Park. Dashiell Park is our research and development labs. We've got about 3,500 people there, the vast majority of which are technologists. So it's, 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 it's a tech hub. Um, we've got about 90 high-tech companies that we engage with on that campus. And it's very much the, the, the home, if you like, of research and innovation for BT. It's our global engineering HQ, so it sits at the hub of a, rate of, of a broad network of, of centers. And it's the largest test and integration facility in Europe. And our goal is to make this a national center of excellence for telecommunications research and ICT. And this sits at the hub of, of a broader network. So we've got presence around the, around the world in either labs or engagements with strategic university partners. The, these are just examples. So all the way from Tsinghua University, where we engage with that university and we have a research center, all the way through to uh, EPTIC, which is Neti Salad BT Innovation Center in Abu Dhabi, through to the UK, where Industrial Park is our hub, MIT, of course, and, and Silicon Valley, where we have a strong scouting activity. So although we have a hub at Industrial Park, which is our re research and development center of excellence, it's, it, it feeds from a broad network, an ecosystem of engagements and innovations. And that ecosystem consists of startups like many of you here, through to universities. We engage with about 40 to 50 universities around the world, government industry, and of course, customers, where we are very active in co innovating with those customers through uh, activities such as hot housing and uh, events, I guess, like this. So, <clears throat> Hub Industrial Park, broad network of engagements across startups, industry, academia and our customer base. One last thing, some of you might have mentioned, uh, I think Tron, you mentioned last night you're at the Infinity Lab. 
So the Infinity Lab is our UK-based uh, front door for startups. <clears throat> it's run by Will Pryke, who's here somewhere. Uh, I was going to say uh, back there, yes. I'm sure he'll be delighted to engage with, with all of you, actually, in, in how we run this and how we engage with startups. We do this with, with, with Tech Hub. It's a partnership with Tech Hub. And the way we operate is we run competitions where BT expresses a, a challenge, uh, an innovation challenge or a technology challenge where we'd like to engage with the startup community to look for new, fresh ideas, either in products, services, systems, network technologies. Uh, and then through that competition, we engage with startups. Those that are most successful will be then introduced to the executives who will then take it forward, try and ingest it within BT. For example, the current one we've got at the moment is a connected family <coughs> competition focused very much on that ultra-fast home. You know, how do we realise that ultra-fast home? What kind of services, products and capabilities will add value to our customer base in, 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 in that area? So hopefully you'll get, you've got some glimpse of BT and the, research that, and the, the way we approach research. Our vision statement for BT is using the power of communications to make a better world. Uh, at the heart of it is research and innovation. Research and innovation has driven both BT and our business and our industry throughout its history. Uh, in fact, you can mark our history by step changes in technology which have transformed the kind of services that we've delivered to our customer base. So today we'd be delighted to engage with, with you in the, in the various sessions and we look very much forward to this agenda which is extremely exciting. Thank you. Thanks, John.